Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Teochon Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today's Sunday, November 3rd, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 21 through 33, and chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. Brethren, whatever anyone dares to boast of, I am speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast of that. Are the Hebrews? So am I. Are the Israelites? So am I. Are the descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman. With far greater labors, far more imprisonments, and countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I have received at the hands of the Jews forty lashes less one. Three times I have been beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Three times I have been shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been adrift at sea. On frequent journeys and danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brethren, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. And apart from other things, there is the daily pressure upon me of my anxiety for all the churches who is weak, and I am not weak, who is made to fall, and I am not indignant. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, he who is blessed forever, knows that I do not lie. At Damascus, the governor under King Artius guarded the city of Damascus in order to seize me, but I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped his hands. I must boast, there is nothing to be gained by it, but I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who fourteen years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body I do not know, God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise, whether in the body or out of the body I do not know, God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man I will boast, but on my own behalf I will not boast, except of my weakness. Though if I wish to boast, I shall not be a fool, for I shall be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. And to keep me from being too elated by the abundance of revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I besought the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I will all the more gladly boast of my weaknesses, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 16, verses 19-31. through 31. Let us be attentive. The Lord said, There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, full of sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom, The rich man also died and was buried, and in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus, in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, 
lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And then he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. Today's gospel reading is about the rich man and Lazarus. There are a lot of things to unpack in this particular story found in the Gospel of St. Luke. So let's highlight a few of them. The first thing is, we know Lazarus' name, but we don't know the rich man's name. That's very telling. Now let's look at it from a different perspective. In the world, the rich man would have been known by everybody because he was a rich man. People would look up to him. They would see him as a person that would give them maybe some scrap themselves, something that they could benefit from by the fact that they know him. We have things like that in today's world. Lazarus, on the other hand, was a forgettable person, someone who lived at the gate of the rich man, someone who was so weak and so hungry and famished that he couldn't even get up to take care of himself. And dogs, not nice dogs, but cruel dogs, seeing the weakness in this person would come and find a way for themselves to take advantage of this person's situation and lick his sores. This was not a nice thing. This was what they were doing because they themselves were picking on poor Lazarus and he had no way to defend himself. We can put it into those terms and understand just how horrible the situation was for Lazarus and how deeply he was suffering. So to have the rich man walk past him routinely, never giving any kind of notice to him, just shows just how terrible this man was. Now Lazarus dies and finds himself in the kingdom, well, in paradise. And he's resting in Abraham's bosom, a place where there is absolutely no bad thing that is happening. He is in a place of comfort and rest where he no longer has to worry about anything. Dogs licking his sores or where he's going to get his next meal. None of those things are of his concern any longer. The rich man dies too, but he dies and ends up in torment where there are flames that cause him to suffer very much. He longs just to have just a small little drip of water to moisten his tongue. That is the depth of his suffering. And so what we see in this particular story is the danger of having a sumptuous life in this life when you are blind to the suffering of the people around you. But we also see that those who suffer in this world will find their reward in the heavenly kingdom. So these kinds of things sit with us and remind us about where our priorities need to be. We need to focus on being followers of God. We need to have our eyes open, our head on a swivel to make sure that the people around us are not suffering when there is something that we could do about it. In the Orthodox Church, we speak of memory eternal. That memory has to do with God, not with us. And so having God remember us forever is a sign that we will be with God because God loves that which he names. So Lazarus, being known in heaven as Lazarus, is seen as saved and loved by God. The rich man, even though he may have had a name in the world, does not have a name now, which means, God help him, that he is forgotten by God. There is no memory eternal for him, and so he suffers. He suffers eternally because of his blindness to the suffering of people in the living world. So this serves as a warning to all of us to understand that in order for us to actually find ourselves in the kingdom of heaven, we need to make sure that our, our eyes are open to see the suffering of the people around us. And we need to make sure that we're not fooling ourselves into thinking that somehow we are saved because we are 
pious people because we pray more, because we go to church more, because we think holy thoughts or obey the Ten Commandments or any of those things. No, it goes way beyond that. It goes into when we are aware of the suffering of the brother and sister around us and we do something about it to bring them up into a level playing field so that they can have a normal life just like we have a normal life. Then we are in a better position. But if we just walk past those people thinking, let them feed themselves, or I hope it goes well with you, think St. James' epistle there, or any other thing where we neglect the suffering, regardless if they're people that have been in this country forever or are just coming today. If we are completely blind to their suffering, that blindness comes at tremendous cost. And we may find ourselves more like the rich man than like Lazarus. And we too may find that our names are forgotten eternally as opposed to being remembered. Yes, this is indeed a warning that our Lord is sending to us we need to have the eyes to see and the ears to hear and the hands and the feet that God will bless so that we can take care of those people around us and not allow them to suffer. May God help us do the right thing. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below. And may God bless and keep you and everyone you love today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.